I'm Kevin Burke and I'm uh, going to speak to you today about uh, Irish fiddle playing. I'm going to play uh, some different tunes, different dance rhythms uh, and uh, give you some ideas on how I approach uh, these different, uh, different tunes. I'm going to start off with two tunes that come from the southwest of Ireland. Um, there are two polkas, and they sound a little bit like this. But first, we should tune up. So that, this is the A string, second string. And here's the D. The bass string. And the E string. So I'll, uh, I'll play the two tunes uh, at a kind of regular speed and then uh, I'll slow them down and we can talk about them as we go. I'll play them twice each. So they're the two polkas that I'm going to talk about. Um, one thing I should point out right away is that um, there are no set patterns, uh, no set bowing patterns for uh, Irish music. If you, if you ever uh, watch three or four Irish fiddle players playing together, one of the first things you'll notice is that even though they're all playing the same tune and they're usually playing in unison, um, all the bows are going in completely different directions most of the time. Um, once in a while, by a sheer fluke, you might notice that they're moving in sync for a couple of bars, but that's about, uh, that's about as far as it goes usually. Um, but of course, uh, to, uh, that, can be, that can be kind of confusing when you're trying to, trying to learn something. So I've tried to make these first tunes uh, fit into a, a kind of typical bowing pattern. Uh, but I'd like you to under make sure you understand I'm not uh, telling you that this is the right way to do it. There are many, many right ways to do it. This is just one way that I think uh, might be convenient for the purposes of uh, letting you know how to play these tunes. Something that's very, very typical with Irish tunes. Um, each tune is usually made up 
of uh, two pouts, and each pout is eight bars long, and each pout is played twice. So you play two A's, two B's, two A's, two B's, and then you go into the second tune. Um, there are lots of exceptions, of course, to that rule. Um, some, some tunes are played, as they say, singly, which means each section of eight bars is just played once, you don't repeat. Some tunes have three, four, five parts. But by far the majority have two parts, and each part is played twice, and then you play the whole lot again. And then it's kind of standard practice to join the tunes in different melodies, uh, join, uh, in, join the tunes together to form a medley, and um, often it's uh, customary to change key with each change, but that's not a, a necessary thing, it's just a kind of a, a common occurrence. In fact, this first tune, um, I'm playing it in the key of D at the moment, but it's very often played in the key of A, and to play it in A, all you have to do is shift everything over one string, just over one to the higher string. Anyhow, we'll go through the tune. I'll, uh, I'll play it uh, a couple of times, and the first time we'll concentrate on the fingering, and then when we get through that, I'll do it again, and this time we'll concentrate on the bowing. So, the first phrase of the tune goes like this. And then the second half of the first part is like an answer to that. It starts off the same. And then it finishes up. So we'll do that again, just the second half of the first part. So the two first parts together would sound like this. Now the second part starts off I play it once more and the second half of the second part goes So the whole second part sounds like this. So now I play the whole tune once through. And again, just concentrate on the fingering for now. Three, four. So that's once through the whole tune, and like I said at the beginning, usually you'd play it twice, maybe even three times, and then um, change into a second tune. So we presume that uh, we've played it the three times or the two times, and we'll play the second tune now. It changes key here. 
Um, again, take note of the fingering. So that's the first part once, I'm breaking it in half. And then the second half of the first part goes up to the E string there. And the second part And then the second half. So then you'd re normally repeat that twice and then go back and play the first part twice and the second part twice. So I'd play the whole tune through one time. That's two A's and two B's. Now, with regard to the bowing, the first tune starts off with an up bow, and as you follow the tape through the way I just played it, you'll notice that I've tried to be consistent. So, when you when you come back to play the tune again or play the uh, each part again, your bowing should be set up so that you can start off and just repeat the very same thing that you've just done. However, when you get to the end of the first part, uh, the first tune, when you finish the first tune and you want to change into the second tune, you're playing an up bow. Oh. That's the last notes of the first tune. And then the second tune starts on a down bow. So you have to link the last note of the first tune and the first note of the second tune, all in the same down bow. And the way I do it to make it sound a little smoother is to put another note in between. I don't wait on the very last note. So you have... Sorry. Do that once more. And then the same thing applies, the, the, the second tune ends up on an up bow, so you're in good shape to start off on a down bow again, and it just repeats itself all the way through. So hopefully between the, what you've seen on the tape and uh, the uh, accompanying notation, you shouldn't have much trouble with the bowing. But as I said, if you're having trouble and you don't like the way it goes, remember I, you can feel totally free to change it. I won't be around to wag my finger and tell you you're doing it wrong. So there are the two porkers. So now let's play them up to speed. And uh, during the second one in particular, you can watch out for some uh, little double stops that I sometimes throw in. Little chord effects. It's not a, it's not a real uh, common part of Irish music, but sometimes it's nice to 
give it a little bit extra dynamic by playing a couple of uh, double stops. Anyway, here they go, the two polkas. <laughs> 